Hello and welcome back and this is video 6 in the series where we're learning how to use Apache Spark in Microsoft Fabric and today we're going to be focusing on how to read and write data frames to Lakehouse tables. So obviously up until this point we've been working with data frames but in Fabric really what we want to be doing is saving those as Lakehouse tables so that we can use them for analysis, Power BI, we can do direct lake mode, looking into these tables. So once we've done our transformations and our cleaning and all these kind of things, we save it out to a table. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. So picking up from the last lesson where I showed you how to create data frames from files, we're just gonna start by grabbing one of the files that we used last time into a data frame. So we have some data to work with. Okay, so now we have some data and you might be familiar with this if you watched the last video, and it's property sales data. So we've got sale prices of three properties. It's got some other variables like the city, the agent that sold the property, the address, and the type of property, happy days. So one thing that we need to be aware of is a few limitations. So if we want to write our data into a lake house table, there are a few limitations about what we can call columns. And I'll leave a link in the description below to this. But there's a few different things to bear in mind here. Uh, specifically, we can't have any spaces. So if you've got spaces in any of your column names, it's not gonna allow us to write that into a lake house table. And it also gets a bit funny about special characters. So any special characters are not generally gonna go down very well with our lake house. So if you look at our data set here, I kind of, deliberately made this a bit of a dodgy data set so that we can clean it a little bit. So you can see that as is commonplace with a lot of data projects, we've got a trailing space here in the address line. So that's not gonna work. And also this dollar sign, that's not gonna work either. It doesn't like that. So if we were just trying to kind of try and write this to a table, it's not gonna work. It's gonna say, no, you, I'm not dealing with those columns. You've got to change those. So what I'm going to start by doing is use this function that we can call on our data frame called with column renamed. And it's just going to rename the columns. So here what I've done is you pass in the name of the column that you want to rename with the new name for that column. And I've just chained three of these together because there's three column names that are not going to work. So let's just call that. And then obviously I've assigned that back to our data frame variable to kind of overwrite it. Okay, so that's been successful. Now we should have, let's just do df.printschema again, just to double check that that has worked. Okay, so now we can see that our sales price underscore USD. So that is going to work. And also our address as uh, we've removed that space from the address line. Okay, so now we have our columns in a suitable structure for writing to a table. So writing to a table, the code for this is fairly straightforward. What we want to do is on your data frame, you want to call write, and there's a few different modes that we can use. So write.mode overwrite will overwrite everything in that table with whatever you're passing in this time. And we're gonna be using format delta. So as you may know, all of our tables within a lake house are built on top of this delta lake format. So they're actually delta lake tables with parquet files sitting underneath them. And so we want to be calling save as table and we pass in the name of the table that we want to call our table. And if we do save as table, what that's gonna do is save it as a managed table. And in Spark, there's two different types of table. One of them is managed and one of them is unmanaged. And the managed table is kind of what we want to be using in Fabric most of the time, because it means that both the metadata and the data are being managed by Spark. And we're just gonna run this cell. Okay, so that's succeeded. Let's just refresh our tables. And there we go. You can see we have property sales as a table and we can see we've got this little triangle here, which means it's a delta table in fabric. And I mentioned there's four different modes that we can use 
when writing tables. We can use the overwrite functionality, which is what we've seen previously. We can also append. So if we've got daily data, for example, and we just want to append today's data onto the really long kind of log data of all data from all time, then we might, might want to use append. We can also use error, which will throw an error if that data already exists or if that table already exists in our lake house tables area. And we can also call ignore as a write mode. And what this is gonna do is, again, it's gonna fail, but it's gonna fail silently and you can handle that using it in a different way to how you would handle your error if you were to use the error mode. So these are some of the different write modes that we have available to us. And this is what I was talking to you about the managed versus unmanaged Delta Lake, Delta Lake table. So just for fun, if I run this code here, what we've got is df.write.mode overwrite format delta. And this time we're doing save. Okay, not save as table, but save. And we're gonna give it a path and that path is gonna be in the files section. So we're not dealing with a managed table. It's not in our tables section. This is an unmanaged delta table. And you can see here, what we've got here, I've called it unmanaged.delta. So that's probably not something you're gonna be using on a day-to-day -day basis, but useful to know the difference between managed and unmanaged tables. Okay, and that's all for this video. We've shown you how to take a Spark data frame, change some of the column names so that it's valid, and then upload it into a Lakehouse table so that we can use it for Power BI or for data science projects or whatever you want to do in Fabric. That's how you would load a Lakehouse table. Make sure you join us tomorrow for the next video in this series. And if you're not subscribed already, make sure you're subscribed. Leave a comment if you've got any questions or queries. See you tomorrow.